In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Have you ever desperately want to hear from Jesus? Have you ever desired to be healed? Healed from physical ailments, heart diseases, diabetes, some of us call it sugar beeties, cancer, Alzheimer's, HIV, COPD, MS, CFSCI. Or if you're anything like me, in the morning time you hear your body snap, crackle, and pop, and you have to put some joints together every day reconnecting ourselves. How about psychological and behavioral responses that can be challenging to manage or even addictions? Finances can also be a source of our lives that need healing, amen? Whether it's poor money management or being broke, or what I like to call broke-itis, Whatever the healing is that you are seeking, the story in our gospel today tells us that Jesus has it. My Aunt Mary would lead a song in church, in the Church of God in Christ, and she would say, whatever you need, the Lord God's got it. Or when I was a little girl, I remember hearing a song that my mother would sing by Andre Crouch, Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul, for I have touched the hem of his garment. Hey, Amen. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. And his blood has what? Made me whole. It wasn't until I got older that I appreciated how much this song, among others, meant to my mom. While taking care of her spouse and us children, she would sing, oh, it is Jesus. While taking care of her parents, yes, it is Jesus. While working a full-time job, it is Jesus in my soul. And taking care of her own health and well-being, for I have touched the hem of his garment and expecting the house to be spotless when she returned home from work, for his blood has made me whole. Some of you are managing multiple jobs and life's obstacles, trying to take care of yourselves while volunteering with community organizations that are keeping you busy, fulfilled, and exhausted. For I have touched the hem of his garment. Some of you who are students trying to study and figure out life, figure out what you want to do with your life, while making discoveries, discovering who your real friends are, or if you have any friends at all. For I have touched the hem of his garment. We are in a country where the political climate has rarely been steady. We continue to see violence where there should be peace and discord where there should be harmony. Even now, we head into an election season filled with uncertainty and, for some people, fear. But I want to remind you today of a quote that was attributed to Ralph Abernathy. He said, I don't know what the future may hold, but I know who holds the future, for I have touched the hem of his garment. We put our trust and our faith in Christ because there is a healing to this world, to this nation, our communities, and our very own bodies that only Jesus can bring. For his blood has made me whole. Some of us have tried to find healing at the bottom of a bottle. Some of us have tried to find healing in a pipe healing through misuse of our bodies or even abuse of others, putting others down so that we can feel good about ourselves. But have you tried healing through Jesus? Some of us have tried escapism, 
We even tried relocating, thinking that if we can move our physical being, we can somehow escape our problems. Some of us become more busy in our work to avoid dealing with ourselves or with our families. But have you tried healing through Jesus? Much like you and I, the crowd in the story we heard today desperately sought out Jesus to receive a healing touch, a God touch. I imagine that the healings came in a literal sense and a figurative sense because healing must first begin in the mind. We must put our mind on Christ in order for the healing of Christ to manifest in our lives. Our perspective can no longer be what it once was. It has to be God's will and not our own will. And I must confess that this is a problem not only for myself, but for many of us because we want to shape God and not allow ourselves to be shaped by God. We want to tell God what we want, how we want it done, and when we want it done. We want to see the change in other people, but are not willing to do the work to change ourselves. But when you try Jesus, when you seek Jesus' face, when you become like Jesus, Healing begins in our minds, grounding ourselves in Christ, allowing the will of God to shape the desires of our hearts, desires that seek forgiveness, that show mercy and offer grace and offer love. Healing can look like freedom from addiction or being able to manage the recovery process. Healing can look like transparency, which requires a level of vulnerability and honesty, if you are willing. Through prayer and meditation, physical fitness, among other activities, are just a few ways that we can follow Jesus and seek the healing that we need in our lives. And each of our healing will look different from the other. The apostles shared with Jesus what they had done and what they had taught. And Jesus said, come away, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. The apostles also needed healing. And Jesus addressed their needs for healing through providing them with rest. Although their rest was short-lived, Jesus took compassion on the crowds that followed them and gathered around them because they appeared as lost sheep. Jesus was their shepherd, and Jesus is our shepherd today. Just as the psalmist names the Lord as his shepherd, we too ought to seek Jesus as our shepherd The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me lie down. But some of us don't want to lie down. We want the rest, we want the healing, but we don't want, we want to rest while we're standing up being busy. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Is there anywhere in this particular psalm, Psalm 23, which many of us know by heart, does it say anywhere about creating committees? Does it say anything about having a whole bunch of meetings? Does it say anything about being violent or creating hostile situations? Does it say anything about being judgmental? Does it say anything about God wanting you to live a life of struggle? I don't think it says that anywhere in this particular passage. The first three verses are power verses, infused with God's calling us into rest, stillness, and restoration, especially during times of physical and mental and spiritual distress and agony. What are you seeking from the Lord today? 
What healing do you want to occur in your life? Not your spouse's life, not your neighbor's life, not your children, your life. There is nothing too messy for Jesus. There is nothing too great or too small for God to handle. Whatever it is you need or think you need, bring it to the Lord in prayer. Surrender your hurt. Surrender your pain. Surrender your stress to the Lord. James Weldon Johnson wrote in a sermon, your arm is too short to box with God. Cast your cares upon the Lord, brothers and sisters. Seek Christ's face and experience the healing that only Jesus can bring. You are not alone for the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not be in want even until the end of the age. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul. For I have touched the hem of his garment, and his blood has what? Made me whole. And may the church say, Amen. Amen.